A ham with 57 years in the hobby just emailed me, and after reading it, I realized we've been avoiding this conversation for far too long. Let's talk about it. Hey everybody, welcome back to Hamshack TV. I'm your host, Josh AA4WX. Appreciate you tuning in. Today's video is brought to you by Gigaparts, folks. If you are looking for anything ham radio related, computer related, uh, maker supplies, 3D printing, all that good stuff, go check out my friends at Gigaparts. If you live in the Huntsville, Alabama area, you can go by their showroom there at 6123 University Avenue in Huntsville, Alabama, or you can go online, shop in your socks at gigaparts.com and use coupon code HamshackTV you're going to get double rewards points. That's gigaparts.com. Hamshack TV is your coupon code. So I want to shout out uh, Ben, Ben Johnson, NY0O. Uh, interesting call sign there, NY0O, uh, for sending me this email. And uh, he's asked me to share it, so I, I'm doing so. Uh, ben, thank you for sending this. Uh, I'll read the email here. Hello, Josh. I have been a ham radio operator since 1968. Am still active or still currently active. Uh, I've held uh, I've held my current call sign and extra class since 1987, and agree with your uh, assessment that we need more activity on the amateur bands and more people communicating. We need to take a hard look at current at the current licensing system and make some serious changes. The current entry level license is technician class. We need a true beginner's license, similar to the former available novice license, which is how I got my start. He goes on to say, a few years or a few days ago, I went to hamstudy.org and took a sample technician license test. And after 57 years in amateur radio, I scored only an 85% and can see where beginner, where, I can see where for a beginner's license, this might be a quite daunting task especially if your main goal is local communication on VHF or UHF and being able to help handle communications during an actual emergency. In a grid down situation, you will probably be using FM voice communications for simplicity's sake. For local com uh, communications, you don't need to know about satellite orbital, orbital cons uh, calculations, how to abbreviate them, uh, cor abbreviate correctly the term kilohertz, or even the names of the electrodes or uh, names of the electrodes of a diode. Uh, you don't need to know how to communicate. You, you need to know how to communicate efficiently and effectively and how to use uh, universally expected or accepted phonetic, uh, phonetics, uh, how to avoid interfering with other communications and how to set up your radio so you can communicate. Back in the day, I had to study to pass my novice exam, but it covered mainly practical items, such as available frequencies for novice, how to measure a half-wave dipole for resonance, how to tune your transmitter, Ohm's law, and how to not get electrocuted by your equipment. It ensured that you had the minimum amount of knowledge to safely and legally operate on the amateur bands. The FCC may not want another uh, amateur license, another class of amateur license, but how many license classes do we need? Could we, could we get by with maybe two classes of licenses instead of three uh, that there are currently available? If, is there any reason why we just couldn't have a basic license allowing VHF and UHF operations with a 50 watt limit, similar to GMRS privileges and full privileges with a technician or general class license? Uh, when I got into ham radio, general class licenses had full privileges on all bands and virtually nobody bothered getting the extra class license as it has no advantage. Vanity call sign availability uh, could be based on number of years licensed instead of which, li or which license uh, test you have passed. Also, to help uh, more people uh, trained to communicate, could family members of licensed amateurs be allowed limited VHF and UHF privileges with permission and training from the licensed amateur. Uh, similar to the family operating privileges 
available for GMRS users using the licensee's call sign. By the way, don't you think it's odd we still have uh, privileges on the books for two licenses that are no longer uh, being issued, the novice and the, am or the advanced license? If we don't get more activity, I could see that we might use lose part of our 420 to 450 megahertz band uh, to GMRS or some other service. Could you put this out on the YouTube channel, Hamshack TV? Use it or lose it. I value your input. Thank you. Ben B. Johnson, November Yankee, Zero Oscar. Ben, thank you so much for your email. Um, you've got a lot of very valid points here in this email, for sure. Um, <clears throat> we're going to start, the, the, this is definitely going to stir up a conversation. And folks, I want you to go ahead and get in the comments. Tell me what your thoughts are uh, straight away. What do you think? Should we look at possibly revamping uh, the way the license classes are? First off, if you're going to get in the comments, tell me, get rid of the license, get rid of the test. Forget that. I'm going to tell you right now, I'm, I'm going to thumbs down those, those comments. But put them in there because it certainly helps the YouTube channel or the YouTube algorithm push my video. So comment what you want, but I'm going to tell you right now, if you're going to say get rid of the, li or get rid of the exams, I'm going to tell you no right now. We still need license exams for sure. But should they be as rigorous as what, what they are currently? That is a very interesting uh, concept. And you, you do have a great point about the technician license. Uh, do we really need to know about satellite orbital patterns and, and, and dio, know, all this stuff about schematics and stuff like that and the electrodes of a diode and, you know, how to abbreviate kilohertz. Who cares how to abbreviate kilohertz? You know, it, it, that's just silly stuff. Now, mind you, that is a stupid, easy question. But again, why make a test if it's not going to be for practicality? Seriously, is, is kilohertz, is somebody not knowing how to abbreviate kilohertz going to shock somebody or burn somebody or, or something like that? No, it's not. It's silly. Silly stuff. Should we really look at revamping the license, uh, the license stuff? I don't know. I don't know. You've got me really thinking about that. Um, <clears throat> as far as your question about uh, could we allow family members uh, to use a person's license, I am not in support of that. Um, in an emergency or a Qualified third-party traffic uh, transaction? Sure. I have no issue with third-party traffic at all. But I'll give you an example of something that happened uh, just the other day. Um, there was a ham here locally, and I don't know who it was, and if they did, I, I, I wouldn't tell you their call sign on the air. His wife picked up the mic, non-licensed, and told his wife to, or told his husband or her husband uh, that they needed milk or something like that and love you and all this stuff. And he was completely embarrassed by it because he knows it's not allowed. Uh, but he ended up adopting her as third party traffic, uh, just to make it legal. I still question whether that was legal or not. Um, we as hams, we ought to make sure that our spouses are aware that you do not need to keep that mic unless there is an emergency. Uh, any, any radio, you can keep the mic if there's an emergency, but not ham. Uh, you, you, hams, you need to have a license to key up that mic unless you're in a life and death or property uh, scenario uh, situation there. So I do not support that. Uh, I think the GMRS privileges are unique, and I like that idea that they have on GMRS. But let's be real, that operating platform is a lot more affordable to get involved in uh, than the ham radio side of things. Uh, I don't think afford for affordability is a big, big thing about this, but uh, still, I, that, I think the affordability makes it a little easier. You know, if you're on a family hike or something and want to take some radios with you, uh, you know, if your kids get separated for you, great. You can key up that GMRS radio and uh, get located if y'all get separated or something like that. I have zero issue with that. Um but with him, I, I just, I don't know about that. And I don't want to be accused of gatekeeping because I'm not a big supporter of gatekeeping. Y'all know that from my previous videos, but, um, I, I'm, I'm not a huge, I, I don't, I don't know about that, but should we make an, a simpler entry level? 
I, I might could get on board with a century, a simpler entry level. Maybe you revamp the technician license to where it's two meters only. Maybe, you know, I, 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 I probably wouldn't be opposed to that. Or maybe, you know, you, and then you take the general license and the extra, you take the general license and it gives you 440 privileges or 220 privileges or something like that. Uh, and then gives you a, a small portion of HF, and then you revamp the extra class to give you a whole bunch of HF, uh, just like it is. May, maybe that's the direction you go. I'm not sure. Guys, get in the comments. Let me know. Uh, let me know what you think. If you think that that's a good idea or not, uh, tell me what you think about our licensing system as it stands. And guys, again, I, I noticed that I'm looking up at the monitors because I'm watching myself. Uh, I'm using a different camera for this particular video. Uh, usually this is the camera I use, but it's uh, been charging. So guys, uh, again, video is sponsored by Gigaparts. Go check out gigaparts.com uh, for anything ham radio related, computer supplies, maker supplies, 3D printing, all that good stuff. Uh, gigaparts.com and use coupon code HAMSHACKTV for double rewards points. Thanks for watching, guys. We'll see you in the next one. Happy New Year, 73, AA4WX, WSCB 693.